we thank you because this morning our heart is open for encounters from your word we thank you because we will not be the same again we'll be transformed and changed by the power of your word in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord hallelujah help me welcome someone to church someone to your right to your left help me welcome them to church hallelujah help me welcome them to church on your right and your left let me welcome them in Jesus' name. It's nice to see everyone in church today. Amen. All right, let's get into the word of God quickly this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So we've been considering a topic overcoming depression. We've been coming overcoming depression. In this particular service and throughout the Sunday, and the way I'm going to teach is that normally I will teach the same thing in the other other services, but just because of time, I'm going to jump faster so that I can cover some other areas. So in the first service, I began to talk about, I would look at something, I began to talk about why you should overcome depression. We spoke about previously what depression is. So back to the conversation, overcoming the causes of depression. Why do people get depressed and what can they do about it? Amen. If you've experienced depression before, you know depression is a really bad place to be. Who knows that? Depression is a really bad place to be. So let's read this. First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. Verse 14. The Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit troubled him. I want us to read from the message translation. That makes it very easy for all of us. First Samuel chapter 16 in verse 14. Yeah, makes it very, very easy for all of us. Yeah. The Bible says this. Yeah. The Bible says, and at the very moment, the spirit of God left Saul, and, and, and a black mood was sent. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It said, and the spirit of God left Saul and a black mood, you know, depression, was sent by God to settle on him and it was terrified. I explained this more in the, in the first service what the translators meant by was sent by God. But verse, verse, verse 15 says that Saul advisor said, this awful tormenting depression from God is making your life miserable. So we see in the Bible the case of someone that experienced depression. I was, I was, I was, there was a, there's a lady that I know and fall into a depression and it's a very bad story. They, she and the husband were together and things were nice. They left the house, they left the house, both of them went to work on Tuesday morning and by Tuesday evening she got back. The husband was a kind of bit late. She tried to call him, his phone was not responding. Eventually she stepped off thinking the husband will come in later but the husband did not come in later. So she woke up in the next morning and saw that the husband was not home. She began to frantically call, she couldn't reach him. Later the next day, in the evening, she eventually reached him on WhatsApp. And he said, ah, honey, you're you are making me scared. You didn't come home yesterday. You didn't call. You didn't text. And the guy said, I'm so sorry. I just want to let you know that I'm in the U.S. right now. You know, he says, I'm in the U.S. right now. I want to let you know that um, why we lasted, it was a great match. He said, I have moved on. He said, I want to ask you also, move on. Yeah, he says, I want to ask you also, move on. This was heartbreaking. This was heartbreaking because you will consider, you will consider that they had slept together a night before. They were on the same bed. They were talking. There was no fight. And that was the conclusion of the marriage. And since that time till now, some years, the lady has never set his eyes on the guy or been in contact with him again. People fall into depression. Some of them put depression is not something about that. It's the fact that they were praying that ABC would happen and DYZ happened. So, depression has many causes. So, but the question is that how can I really get over depression? And how do I really get to do that? How do I really get to do that? You know, one, one of the things I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to jump in the Bible, is why you should overcome depression. Why you should overcome depression. Number one, because, you know, number one, because depression creates a demon attraction zone. Depression creates a demon attraction zone. First Samuel chapter 16, you know, just where we read. First Samuel, I don't know if we're reading in this service yet. First Samuel chapter 16, we read it already. You know, depression creates 
a demon attraction zone. Wow, how will I say this? Negative thoughts and emotions create a satanic Wi-Fi zone. I don't know that. Have you ever been to a place before? And have you asked that? Is there Wi-Fi? Have you ever been there before? What well, you say? Is there what? Yeah. So the thing is that when Satan wants to create a zone where there's satanic Wi-Fi, he brings depression. And the reason why is that the pressure has a way of pulling everything. Do you have my rope? Do you have my rope? You have my rope? Yeah. Really good. Really good. Really good. Can it be? Come. Help me with this rope. Glory to God. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. No, no, no. You don't have to do... Yeah. I, I can... It's tied up somewhere, right? Okay, okay, all right. So, this is what depression does. So, let's read. I want us to go back and read the story in First Samuel again. Let me give some context to it. The Bible says this. So, First Samuel chapter 16, um, chapter 16, verse 14. The Bible says, And the very moment the Spirit of God left Saul, and he was in a dark place, and a black mood sent by God settled on him. And his advisor said, this awful tormenting the pressure from God is making your life what? Miserable. So one of the things Satan does is that when Satan wants to really attack people, I wanted to hold on to the end of it. You know, can we just enter into this? What, what, you know, what Satan does when he really wants to attack people is to kind of use depression on them. And, you know, just come towards me. Just come towards me. You know, you come towards me. He will come as you come. And when you had depressed satan begins to use the depression to what to pull you into a dark place one of the things i told you last week was this i say don't allow fear in your life because fear will take you to what forbidden territories once you are depressed satan used the pressures you know what happens to you when you're depressed you begin to doubt the word of god you begin to doubt who you are you begin to doubt your very person you begin to doubt there are things you know you can do there are things you know that God has done for you. You begin to ask things that does God really exist? You begin to ask that does God love me? You begin to ask questions that is God faithful? You begin to say, what did I do to God? You begin to ask yourself these questions that put holes in your belief. And that's what Satan wants to do exactly. Satan wants you to be in a dark place. That's exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants to be in a dark place. And many of you, the first thing he brings on you is a depression. So look at Saul. You know, you look at Saul. Saul was attacked primarily with depression. And how does he come? This is very bad. Negative things. Let me, let's read in the Bible. Luke chapter 6 verse 5. I'm just going to run through it. Luke chapter 6 verse 5. Luke chapter 6 verse 5. Are you here somebody? All right. Luke chapter 6 verse 5. Luke chapter 6 verse 5. Chapter 6, verse 35. What does the devil want to do? The devil wants to use the depression to create a negative zone around you. Verse 35. The Bible says this. It says, Luke chapter 6, verse 35. No. That's what I'm looking for. Just give me a minute. Luke chapter 6 verse 45 rather. Not, yeah. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, A good man out of the abundance of his heart bring it forth what? Yeah. Thank you. The two of you can go. You can bring, you can bring the two of you now. Let's read it again. One to go. Luke 6 verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. The Bible says that an, an evil man out of the evil treasure has bring it what? The purpose of depression is to corrupt your heart so that your fruit will be corrupted. The purpose of depression, because depression is a heart issue. So this is what the devil does. And I, I, I love this. I brought this from my house. You know, you know, you will think you bought yam, but my yam is growing. So what Satan does is that he puts something in you that begins to grow. Once the root is negative, the fruit will be negative. So, you know, a lady was saying to me, and she was explaining that to her person, he said she had a problem with her marriage and got separated. 
And from the separation, you know the next thing that happened? The next thing was that she had a health diagnosis. From that, she lost her job. From that, she got duped. The question was, how did one thing lead to the other? How did one thing lead to the other? Because as soon as depression comes, is looking for what? Roots. And you must be careful. Let the root of negativity sink into you. You know, let me tell you why I don't allow depression. This is the reason why. Genesis 1 verse 11. The Bible says, every seed will bear after itself. If I allow one seed of negativity, there will be more seeds of negativity to come. Many of you are here and you wonder that, okay, how come? Let me ask you a question. Have you, has someone ever been here where you had one problem in about two months, the problem became ten different kind of problems? Yes or no? Have you asked yourself how it happened before? The reason why is that was the root of depression enters, it will be giving down different fruits. This is the same reason that when someone dies, sometimes in that family, four people can die in one year. Because as soon as someone dies, the seed has been sown. You must be careful so that the wrong seed is not sown in your heart. Glory to God. So, look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart. So, if depression and negativity is in abundance in your heart, what will happen? It will be bearing that kind of fruit. You can't allow it to be there. I've seen people, you know, I've seen people that they were depressed because they were raped as a child. Guess what? Most people that were raped as a child were raped more in the future. They were raped in, when, when, as they grew up. And the reason, I'm not saying anybody should rape somebody, that's what I'm saying. Be careful how you interpret this. You know, but what I'm saying is that once you carry that pain, you carry that pain, you be, the pain begins to form a cycle and begins to repeat itself. You leave this relationship because of abuse. And guess what? Without you knowing, you enter in that relationship that the abuse is even much more. And you wonder that, what is wrong? The reason why is this. The pain, the rejection is in your heart, is a root. You are now repeating the cycle. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Depression, listen to this, write this down. Depression creates a base for Satan to operate. Depression creates a base for Satan to operate. So it will start with one thing, then begin to spread to other things. And how does depression start? It starts with a lie. He said, so because you lost 20 million in business, Satan will lie to you and say you will never succeed. Let me tell you something. Every time you believe a lie, you empower the liar. I don't know if you heard me. Oh, did you hear me? Every time you believe a lie, you empower what? The liar. Because at the root of depression, there's a lie you believe. A lie that I'm not good enough. A lie that I'm a failure. A lie that my future will not work. A lie that my business will not work. There's something you believe. And every time you believe a lie, you empower the liar. Let me look at him and say, every time you believe a lie, you empower the liar. The question is, what lie have you, have you believed? What lie have you believed? I can't do well in Nigeria. What lie have you believed? Things don't work out for me. What lie have you believed? Things don't do well. What lie have you believed? This does not succeed. Every time you believe a lie, what lie have you believed? I can never get married. What lie have you believed? No one can love me. What lie have Nobody will support me. Every time you believe a lie, you empower the liar. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Thank you, sir. Second Samuel chapter 6. Why must you overcome depression? The reason why you must overcome depression is this. Because depression makes it so easy for you to miss God. And makes it difficult for you to receive from God. It makes it so difficult for you to receive from God. Depressed people find it difficult to receive from God. They find it very easy to miss God. Second Samuel chapter 6. Oh wow. Are you here somebody? Oh wow. Somebody say hallelujah. Someone say Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. This is very powerful. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Listen to me. For the first time in the lifetime of David, the ark of the covenant, the press of God came back, and David was singing and dancing. And David, you know, 
David was operating in a strong prophetic anointing. The Bible says in, in, in this verse, in verse 20, and David returned to bless his household. David had seen the biggest miracle. This was the Ark of the Covenant. Many of you don't know what the Ark of the Covenant is. Let me explain to you. In the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant talks about the presence of God. So, if, when, if Israel is losing a battle, if they take the Ark there, they will win. But something happened. God was so upset with Israel that the enemies came and took the ark away. So, for the first time, they took it away during the time of Eli. Before even Saul became a king. For the first time, the ark came back. The ark stayed in the house of Obedodom and Obedodom's house prospered. The house came back to the house of David. David was rejoicing and David went to bless his house. Then see what happened. And David returned to bless his house and Micah the daughter of Saul came out to me, David. Everybody look at you, you. You need to get this. This this might be the most powerful thing you've ever heard in recent times. And Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today to uncover today before the eyes of, the, of his handmaidens and as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. The question is this. Will you receive this? What was the state of mind that Micah was in? maybe maybe walk with me now Micah has been singing praising and shouting to have a child and she had not had the child and she had become sunk into a place of depression is it not before you crucify Micah has there been times you've been praying for something that not happened and other people praying their prayer begin to irritate you oh talk to me has there been time you, you've been worshipping and you're saying, hi, late. Before you crucify Micah, you, before you crucify Micah, when you didn't get the business fund and payment or approval you want, didn't you stop coming to church for two weeks? When you had the breakup, didn't you stop serving? Because many of you look at, oh, Micah, why are you being so stupid? Before you point your heart at Micah, can we look at yourself? So, Micah saw David going, hey, hey, hey. Micah, Micah said, oh, the prayers, the fasting we did all these years. Is it, not, is, it not, is it not understandable how depression makes worship irritable to people? And this is what I'm saying. When people are depressed, it's very easy to miss God. And what you need most times when you are in the valley is to know God. But the very God you should know becomes the very God you miss. Do you notice something? That this was a miracle moment for Micah. Because David was coming with the blessing of the Ark of the Covenant. For the first time in the history of his leadership. And it was coming. Everybody was kneeling down and saying, we will receive. Micah was the only one that spoke. Because of the state of our heart. Question. The pressure will affect your heart so much you will miss God. Read, read verse 23. Read verse 23. Let's look at what the Bible says here. The Bible says in verse 23. Look at this. The Bible says, therefore. Therefore means, in other words, as a result of this, because of what we have said previously. Does this mean that that was the miracle moment for Micah that Micah missed. Because when, when you're very depressed, you know what depression does to you? The very thing you should do spiritually begins to irritate you. Am I, am, am I in church today? What am I talking to? What has been through a depression and stopped coming to church because of that? They say, let us fast. You say, I'm not fasting. If God wants to let him do it. He say, oh, the one I've been fasting till now, what has happened? NLP, I'm not doing again. The one I've done throughout last year, where is it? And God is saying that just a little more and there will be a breakthrough. The Bible says, and therefore, this is the bad about depression. It's how it affects you. So, you are in a place where you cannot trust God again. You are in a place where your perspective, you know, it's you're in a place that what you used to do that you not works, you begin to criticize it. Micah was, Micah understood prayer. Micah understood thanksgiving. But because of her barrenness, she had not had a child for a long time. She, she, she had done everything she could. And she now saw him dancing. She said, why are you dancing? What difference does this make right now? And the Bible says, and therefore. Just in case you don't know. 
in the Bible. Michael is the only one that was barren that never had a child she died. And the Bible explains why. That therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, therefore, the question is not what he said, it's the therefore. Because of this, that she missed the miracle moment. What can affect your emotions that can make you miss God? He said, and therefore, you, 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 know, you know why I'm saying this? Because the Bible tells us what we do when you're going to barrenness or when you're going to fruitlessness. You know what it says? It said, let the barren shout for joy. Let him that have no children rejoice. You know what? I really believe if you're going through a season of either body barrenness or you're going to fruitfulness, if you choose to be fruitful, if you choose to shout and scream, you will have a testimony. He said, and therefore, and therefore, the daughter of Saul had no child to death. And therefore, what are the causes of what are the causes of depression? The first cause of depression I want to talk about is this: is a medical is a medical cause. Because some part of the you know I know that as a pastor, some people will deny there's a medical cause to depression. I do not agree with them. I believe there's a medical cause to depression. I believe that there are people that there's an imbalance in their hormones, their their, their hormones, and that's why people use certain kind of drugs. So you will hear people say, you will hear, you know, I find myself going back to Micah. And the reason why I find myself going back to Michael is this. There are many of you that depression has contaminated you. This was not how you used to be before. You used to believe God for big things in business, big things for your life. But you're in a place where you can't believe again and depression has contaminated you. That's the truth. Many of you are contaminated by depression. You used to believe God that you'll get married, but you can't believe for that again. You used to believe God that something will happen to you, but you can't believe God for that. You used to believe God about this great future, but you just finally have to believe God. Oh, when everybody is shouting, you say that, mm, you just become deaf and dumb. You just go into a state of numbness. Praise God. Could depression be the, can, can you walk with me right now? Could depression be the reason why Eli, when he received the prophecy that God would judge him and judge his children, you know what Eli said? Let him do whatever he wants to do. I'm tired. Maybe he has been correcting the children from years to years to years to years to years. He saw no change. He's been praying and praying and praying and praying. And he saw no change. And God says, judgment is coming. He said, God, judge. I'm an old man. I'm tired. I've given up. Just sounds like Saul that is depressed. Because I thought when Eli heard the prophetic word that God would judge his family, that Eli, being a priest himself, he would tremble and he would pray. You know what Eli said? Eli said, God is all wise. Whatever God wants to do, let him do if he thinks he's too right. When people are really depressed, you know what they say? Let the will of God be done. As if they do not realize that they need to use prayer to enforce the will of God. What they do is to eventually throw out in the tower. Thank you. God bless you for clapping. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great time to clap. That's a great time to clap. Amen. That's a great time to clap. Amen. If anybody's not clapping, everyone, are you depressed? Praise God. First Kings chapter 19 as I begin to close. Yeah. Oh, this is good. So causes of depression, we said medical depression. You know, there are some people that there's a, there's, a, there's a hormone called dopamine. Sometimes people are low in dopamine. Sometimes people are on it. There are some hormones that could cause depression. Oxytocin, serotocin, they are low in it. And there are things you can do. Things like exercise, staying in the sun, eating well, drinking lots of water. Those kind of things. For example, have you noticed when people are depressed, they love to stay in the dark? The reason why is that just staying in sunlight can actually increase some level of your hormonal imbalance. Coming to that, what are some other causes of depression? You know, some other cause of depression is this. It's a very simple. It's stress and burnout. Nana, come. Come, come, come. No, no, Nana. Not, not, yeah, the guy. This, is too, this might be too much for you if I give it to you. You have to put your phone in your pocket. All you have to do is climb up. You know, it's a long stage. Climb up, run down, go down, climb up. Yeah. 
Let's go. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are doing it five times. Yeah. So if you can like, you can bounce. If you like, you can run. You know. Yeah. yeah. Don't encourage him. Because, no, because in life, nobody claps for you. You clap for yourself. Yeah. 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 Okay, for the next two lap, you don't, you don't, you, you don't, you, yeah, you, you can climb, yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> Listen, are you out of breath because of a satanic attack? Are you? Is this Satan that made you out of breath? No, just the pace of life, up and down, up and down, up and down, up. And down, up and down. Sometimes it's just the pace of life. Praise God. Should I be honest with some of you? There's nothing wrong with your business. It's just life. Should I be honest with some of you? There's nothing wrong with your relationship. It's just life. Some people are going to walk away. Some people are going to stay. It's just the pace of life. It's and the, to be honest with you, sometimes life is exhausting. Just you know, someone I, I read somewhere said growing up is a trap. But sometimes I agree. Just growing up is a trap. As soon as you're born, it's one thing to the other thing. You saw him as soon as he was sitting down, he was okay. Were you not okay? Use your microphone. Were you not okay? He was okay. But as soon, listen, if you don't want the stress of life, you have to die. People that have no stress are in the graveyard. Stop, stop saying that. Why is all this happening in my business? It happens to everyone. First Corinthians 10, 13, you can show it on the screen. The Bible says that, Bible says that there's nothing you're tempted that is not common. You know, I love the word, I love mathematics. And in mathematics, it's called LCM. It's the lowest common denominator. See what it says. There's no temptation taking you as it's not what? Common. Have you lost money? It is common. Did you go through a breakup? It is common. Were you rejected? It is common. Did you have an abuse? It is common. Stop treating what is common as peculiar. Praise God. Some of you, your problem is your passport. Praise God. Some of you, your problem is just your passport. If you just get another passport, your life gets better. The, what depression does is this. Depression makes you feel that it's not common, that's peculiar to you. And I was shocked when I did the research and I found out that most people eventually marry the fourth person they date. Number four. So I said, not me. Well, you, you said something so not me. I'm just telling you. So I agree, not you, but I'm telling you, this is the average. So when you date two people and you're like, ah, I don't know what happened. I've been breaking up, breaking up, breaking up. See, you were not breaking up. You were in you were in what? You were in finishing school. They were teaching you. Should I be honest with you? Some of you that are dating, the re that you were not dating, you were in training. You were the one that thought you were dating. God was training you. What your dad and your mom and me, the pastor, could not do until that boy broke your heart, you will not learn. Praise God. Same thing, all of you doing businesses. Ask businessmen, the first big money they made in business, they lost it. You didn't lose it, you only bought wisdom. That was your MBA money. You had to pay MBA money one way or the other. If you refuse to pay it to Harvard, then you pay it to life. So just say, wow, I've learned the lesson right now. It says, nothing will happen to you that is not common. Because when you look at Elijah, the thing is that life, where's Nana? Come, come, come again. Come, Nana, come. Climb up, climb up, climb up. Climb, climb again. Climb again. This is how life is. There's a point in life where it's low. 
There's a time you are climbing. There's a time you reach a high place. Go, 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 go. As you reach, then at the time, God, it seems as if you are going down again, right? You, it will be going down again. Then you are on a lower plane. Then what happens sometime again? Then you start climbing. That is just life. Praise God. Go, 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 go. The question I want to ask you is this, as it's climbing, what part of life are you in right now? Some of you, you are on the low plane where you are walking. Some of you, you are climbing the staircase. Some of you, you are on a high plane. Listen to me. It's different season, but I've learned something. In every season, I have my joy. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I need two of you to come. I need two of you to come. Two of you to come. Two of you to come. Yeah. One person should be walking here. One person should be walking here. No, no. You just be going up and down the staircase. That's all your job. You'll be going up and down the staircase. Up and down. This is life. Look at the three of them. Just, just be going up and down. You'll be going up and down. Don't run. Just be going up and down. The way life is. Don't go, no, no, don't, just go, don't, yeah, just be going up and down. The way life is, you look at this place, is in the mountain side of his life. You look at this guy, he's in the lower place, but he's still going to come high up there. Then you now ask this guy, why are you stressing? Who, who is doing the most work? The one downstairs or the one upstairs? The one by his climbing the stairs. You know why? Because when you are in transition, that's when you feel the pressure. Because when you are in transition, that's when you feel the pressure. I wanted to ask pregnant women, the, the labor pain comes when the baby is about to come out. Uh, listen to me. At one month, you don't feel anything. At two months, uh, by the time it gets to eight months, eight and a half, you start feeling, ah, you say, maybe, maybe it's going to say, it's not coming. That, that kind of pain is someone is coming. The pain is when it goes really hard. Yay! Because the baby is now about to come. The pain you feel is not satanic. The pain you feel is not a curse. The pain means you are transiting. You are moving from pregnant to mother. You are moving from idea to execution. What do you do? You embrace the pain and say, like a Hebrew woman, I will deliver. Somebody say, Amen. What I've learned is this even though I'm on a plane, I will not compare myself with him. Even though I'm climbing the stairs, I'll not compare myself with him. Because we are different faces in life. This is why you are getting depressed. You look on social media and you see someone in their elevation state. And you wonder what's happening to you. Even though they're in the elevation state, you are in your own transition state. It's just a little while I'm coming over there. It's just a little while I'm coming over there. It's just a little while I'm coming over there. The same God that did it for you. There's no scarcity with God. He will do it again. What God does for one shows what's available for other people. If you believe, shout, I receive it. Amen. Thank you, three of you. If you believe it, shout, I receive it. There was a time I would go to my friend's house and all of them had cars. All of my friends had cars except me. But I just felt as if they were on the plane. But I was in transition. I was busy climbing the staircase. I was giving. So it seemed as if ah, I'm walking so much. You know when you're climbing a staircase, there's so much effort. And staircases are long sometimes. Praise God. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Oh wow. I, so, someone say, I embrace my pace. I know I am an overcomer. Someone say, I, sus, I, I retain my joy. Nothing will take my joy. Lift up your voice and bless his holy name, everyone. Lift up your voice. Nothing is going to take my joy. 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 
nothing is going to take my joy hallelujah nothing is going to take my joy nothing is going to take my joy thank you lord for this thank you lord for this nothing is going to take my joy in jesus name we pray listen to me everyone sometimes when it seems as if you're not making progress you are just transiting have you driven to a far place before and someone say where are you you say i'm in the middle of nowhere but it doesn't mean that where where you used to be you're just in a place that is unfamiliar on your way to where you're going to look at what caused what, why was elijah depressed just a day before he had called fire down from heaven he had national respect the next day there was a threat one day he was on a high loom the other day he was on the low just the natural pace of life you know what you need to do be still and know that is the lord and father we thank you we give you praise I pray for everyone that is going through a season where it seems as if everything is working against them. I'm praying that they would know that number one, there's nothing that happens to them that you don't know about. And there's no one that will be tempted beyond what they're able to carry. That no matter how tough it is, they have the power to carry it. And they will be able to keep their joy in this season. We give you praise and glory. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Please, give me the message translation. Give me the message translation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Message on the Passion translation. I wanted to read it to you as we close. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Quickly, please. We don't have so much time. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Can we read together? Want to go? No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the cause of what does have to be. All you need to remember is that God will never let you now. He will never let you be pushed. Listen to me. I know you think that this is beyond your limits, but that's not true. It says, God will never allow you to be tested past beyond your limits. You know, you know sometimes, I, you know, I, I do some exercises and I have a coach. And sometimes he will say, do 15 reps. And he says, do it first, try. Then I find out at 12, I'm like 13, 14, then 15. Then I'm surprised at myself. You don't even know yourself. God knows your capacity. He knows you can take it. He knows you'll come out strong. He knows you'll come out on top. When he knows you will fall, he says, don't carry that one. I know you will fall. He gives you the one right on time. Praise God. Father, thank you for your word. I'm praying that everyone today will experience a strengthening and a renewal in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray.